Hey everybody, welcome to today's daily reflection. Uh, returning to the uh, time we spend with God that includes talk about the vineyard distinctives that we have. Uh, I wanted to let you know that I have both of my girls in the room with me today. So if you hear some chewing of this mixture of honey nut bunches of oats and life cereal, or some baby sounds, those are my daughters. Um, I need to put a pacifier in the mouth. I'll try that. Uh, but today's theme is a phrase I've heard in the vineyard quite a bit and has been really helpful to me. It's, I think it might be God. So a lot of times if somebody is sharing uh, what they believe God is going to do or words that they believe God told them to share, they'll preface it with, I think this might be God. And I mean, that's, that's sharing a couple of really <laughs> profound uh, but foundational things that if they're not there, things can get really sideways really fast. So it's admitting Mom, God here. God is right here. He's everywhere. He's just popping. He's popping. Yeah, he's just popping all over the place. Yeah, he pops in sometimes, doesn't he? So we're gonna co-host, I guess, today again with some commentary. Uh, so I think I, it might be God, or I think this might be God. It's an admission that I'm having an experience that I believe is God. So I think it's real. But there's also a set of uh, my own beliefs, my own history that I'm bringing into it. Uh, and I, I'm not going to speak as if I am certain that beyond a doubt that this is what God is saying or this is what God will do. I think it might be God. But I, it's, it's real. I, I think God is doing something. Uh, so it's not, it's not mm -hmm. fully uh, my experience. It's something that I'm sensing God doing. And so there's humility in that phrase, but there's also behind it all uh, a real desire to love the other person. Uh, because without the humility and the love, it can turn into uh, spiritually damaging or at worst spiritually abusive times of prayer uh, or sharing. So uh, with that, let me pray and I'll read uh, a very famous passage from 1 Corinthians 13, but it actually, it talks about this idea. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. We thank you that you meet us, that we can trust in your goodness that we know that you won't lead us astray, but we also admit that we are imperfect vessels and we don't hear clearly. And so we ask that you would help us to grow in our ability to hear your voice, but also uh, grow in humility and love above all. Amen. So I want to read from 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm going to start actually with verse 8 to uh, 12, I think, 13. I'll start with verse 8 to 13, and then I'll jump back up to verse 4 uh, to kind of punctuate the idea of loving. So Paul says prophecy, in other words, speaking God's words to people. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. That's saying like at the end of time when Jesus returns. But love will last forever. Now, our knowledge is partial and incomplete. And even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away my childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. Or I really like the King James on this. I see through a mirror darkly. But then... 
when perfection comes. We will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know is now partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever, forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so I don't have a lot more to say uh, in the phrasing of I think it might be God that I haven't already. But there's this picture here of prophecy as being like actually imperfect. And uh, one of the founders of our movement, John Wimber, did a interview with Peter Jennings of ABC News. I mean, this was back probably in the 80s maybe early 90s, and uh, Peter Jennings is saying, like, look at all these, like, pretty profound experiences that people are having with, I mean, you believe is the Holy Spirit. Some people are shaking. Some people are getting, he didn't use the word, but getting blasted. That's a vineyard way of saying, like, the Holy Spirit is so powerfully present that you, like, fall on your back and, and so often shake, or you have that experience of, like, putting your fingers through an electrical socket and uh, like there's this like energy going through you I've, I've experienced that only a few times um and they've been real gifts to me but it's not it's not like the normal way that i experience god um but they've been helpful or sustaining uh but what john Wimber said in response to that is i believe that's largely the holy spirit uh and now i'll paraphrase a little bit but he said it there's there's always a mixture uh, people come in with their hurt. A lot of people uh, have been traumatized or have certain abuse in their history. And so they're bringing in their humanity as well. Uh, actually, I would say all of us have been hurt. All of us bring in a certain amount of history. Uh, and so when we, when we experience God and share what he's doing, we know that there's, there's God that's really doing something and there's me that's really interpreting the thing that he's doing, which is why Daddy, we always want to root ourselves in humility. Daddy, hang on, hang on Daddy. one second, kiddo. Can you just please be patient? Thank you. Uh, and we always want to be loving. Another thing, and I don't know if this was John Wimber or someone else in the vineyard once said, like, when God reveals things to me, I only share about 20% of what he's telling me. I use the rest of the 80% to ask questions and guide and pray. So the thing we want to do whenever we're like doing the stuff of Jesus, whenever we're praying for people, is we want to make sure whatever we're sharing is loving. Um, and so with humility, love when we do the stuff. And uh, so let me read now the first part of 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it does no and it keeps no records of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.